Hi, welcome to the Whitey White Guy Show. I'm Whitey, and today I'm going to review a film called The Babe, which uh, came out in 1992. It's directed by Arthur Hiller, and it stars John Goodman, Kelly McGillis, Trini Alvarado, and Bruce Boxleitner. Plus James Com uh, uh, Cromwell's in this. Just a bunch of people. It's got a good cast. Michael McGrady. Stephen Caffrey, a good... Uh, LT appearance from Tour Duty. Um, so the Babe, it, it follows the story, uh, the life story, basically, of Babe Ruth, the famous baseball player, whose real name was like Hermer, Herman George Ruth or some shit. Um, and like I said, it came out in 90, 1992's biographical sports drama about the life of famed baseball player. What was his real name? Um... And it was written by John Fusco, who wrote Young Guns 1 and 2, and has done a bunch of history pieces over the years. Um, <clears throat> the story begins, this is from Wikipedia, the story begins in Baltimore, Maryland in 1902, when seven-year-old George Herman Ruth Jr. is sent to St. Mary's Industrial School for Boys, a reformatory and orphanage. Ruth is sent by his father, George Herman Ruth Sr., who cannot handle raising the boy on his own at the school uh, fuck that noise so anyway <clears throat> babe ruth is seven years old he ends up going to an orphanage raised by a bunch of <laughs> catholic weirdos frankly and uh the one guy father matthias father matthias matthias uh is a big baseball guy and so he's out there pitching the the he's the mighty matthias because he's a grown man throwing a baseball and the young kids try to hit the ball. And then the little Babe steps up, who's always been... And Babe Ruth, who's like, at seven years old, looked like he was in high school. He was like just a, a big kid. Well, maybe that's a little too much. But like 12. He looked like he was in middle school and he was seven. He's just genetically born big. A big person. And so uh, he steps up to the plate, having never held a bat before. But eventually he gets a feel for it and just starts clobbering homers all over the place in the little... Uh, backyard of the orphanage kind of thing uh and so <clears throat> who is it a baseball team actually comes to the orphanage having heard about his success and uh as he's gotten older now he's like in high school age he's ready to get out and they come in and recruit him he goes to play major league baseball but he grew up in an orphanage so he has like a limited understanding of societal faux pas so at one point, the big money baseball owner takes him to this fancy gala, um, and he tells a joke that's, in, you know, imprudent. And it's like, oh. Um, so here's a blue-collar, hard-knocks guy, a very fish-out-of-water person, um, and, you know, he's got to fit into upper-class society circa, third, like, curly from the Three Stooges. Um, John Goodman crushes this role crushes it when you go watch the old black and white footage of babe ruth hitting home runs and trotting around the bases john goodman nails it the way he runs the way he moves tips his hat all that stuff all his idiosyncrasies body mechanics the way he swings the bat his stance john goodman just devoured this role hey kidding stay out of my stuff yeah so um it was, yeah, just a really good performance by John Gunman. Um, you then, a, the babe goes to play baseball. He, you know, starts hitting home runs. And then he meets Trini Alvarez, who's just smoking hot. Um, and who's uh, uh, working at a diner. And um, he, they eventually, dare say, fall in love. They end up in a relationship. And she's going to end up being the first wife, like every biopic that doesn't work out. Even though she's a sweetheart, Babe Ruth just has, he's a barbarian. He has no concept, you know. And uh, at one point he becomes, um, he sets a bunch of firsts. He becomes the, the highest paid player in baseball. At one point he hits the most home run, more home runs than everybody else in the league. He hits the, the league's first infield fly home run. Um, and you know, different crowds are against him, and then he'll crush a home run over the over the wall, you know, and hit the first one outside of Fenway, and then the crowd loves him, and everybody's cheering, and so it's this, this very 
You know, and the babe played for like 21 years, I think. He played for a long time. And so it covers uh, from the time he's seven years old to the end of his baseball career and takes everything and goes and condenses it. So there was one guy, the only guy they could get, who he keeps running up against. And I'd seen it before, and he's got this big, huge wad of chew in his mouth. And they captured the spirit great. The, the period of time, the clothing, all that stuff, I thought they did a really good job with that. Let me find this guy. So, um, but every every time the babe is setting a record or doing something, it's the same picture. And I'm like, okay, is that like a cost thing where you just didn't have a lot of money? So you use the same actor? Or was that the actual picture that was at that event and just happened to go up against the babe a bunch of time over the course of 20 years? And so I looked it up. And the pitcher's name is Guy Bush. And Guy Bush uh, was, you know, at some of the very events they're depicting in the film. And um, was uh, they had to kind of go with Guy Bush because he was one of the few pitchers who played almost as long as the babe did. And, you know, and of course, in the same period of time, he was played by Richard Tyson. And Richard Tyson, you would you might know as the bad guy from the Kindergarten Cop movie, Um as well as I know him, he's uh, Sergeant Bush in Black Hawk Down. Um, he was in Three O'Clock High as the as the bully Buddy Revel. Two Mood Junction as Perry Tyson. Kindergarten Cop. He was Colin Cross Senior. Just a bunch of movies. Lakota Moon. The Baby plays Guy Bush. Genghis Khan. He played big. He played Genghis Khan in a film called Genghis Khan. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go have to. This guy's actually a really dynamic actor. Dark Tide, Pharaoh's Army, Kingpin. He was the bouncer in Kingpin. There's something about Mary. i got to go look at this guy's his, his whole career up. i got to watch all these movies. He was in Me, Myself, and Irene. Anyway, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway. <clears throat> but there was just something about this picture. Like, man, I don't know why, but something about this this picture, this actor, he stands out. And I looked it up, and I knew, of course, he was, I, I'd seen him, the actor, in a bunch of different movies. And I didn't recognize him. So he actually does a really great job as an actor in just small roles throughout things. Uh, and that was Richard Tyson. Richard Terrell. Fuck me right in the butt. Uh, pulling it back up. I lost it. I lost it, America. But, uh, yeah, Richard Tyson. Surprisingly dynamic actor. But, anyway, so, um, the babe, uh, the first marriage doesn't work out with Trini Alvarado's character. And then he goes into another marriage. And then there's spats with him in the ownership of the baseball teams. Um, you know, and then at one point, I guess, I don't know, he he didn't... I imagine she, his first wife, couldn't get pregnant, so they adopted effectively. He just, and in the movie, he just comes home one day and he's like, "Hey, honey, I got you a gift." While I was coming back from work, it's a baby, and it's just like, if that's anything, how that actually went, holy shit! Um, but he was, he was a big old behemoth of a human being, and it was, it was a big heart for the kids. You know, so at one point he's like pulling out a buck. He's like, Arr, brr, and he's got this great deep red. John Kidman nailed this. And the guy with the hot dogs come over. He goes, hot dog guy, get over here. And he hands him 20 bucks and he says, get, get one to all the fellas. And so there's all the little kids, the little rapscallions that snuck in. And he's buying them hot dogs at the game. Um, but then, you know, he's a big idiot. You know, he's cheating on his wife. At one point, he's like, I didn't mean to harm anyone. Brr. So, um, it's a really good film. If you want to know, if you're ever like, Babe Ruth, what was he like? What was that about? John Goodman makes Babe Ruth come to life. I don't know why this, I don't know why the performance doesn't get more acclaim. They had to have done something too, uh, because you can tell it's John Goodman, but at certain angles, you're like, holy shit, that's like, he looks more like Babe Ruth. And this shot, and it's like on the nose, it, that looks exactly like Babe Ruth. But then in another shot, that's John Goodman. And so I don't, I, they had to be using prosthetics. 
and in at times you can tell there's just when you get a lot of dust on his face or something it's like he's wearing some prosthetics with the nose to make him look more like Babe Ruth but in another scene it's just Don, Don Goodman so I'm kind of like eh, eh, I don't get it um but really good performances by everybody it's a good looking film that brings the period of time to life um the the only real qualm I had is like you would have a baseball sequence where he's like, watch this, Lou Gehrig, and pop, and he, you know, blow a ball over the wall, some, you know, 450-foot grand slam home run. Um, and then the next scene, you're like, where you go, babe? Woo, rock and roll, and a kid in the UK. Oh. And then the next scene, it's some conversation with ownership or something, or you know, some political hobnob, and he's being, you know, he's like, pull my finger. <sniffs> oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I wish there was less of that and more baseball. You know, ooh, he's, he's a big old Galuth who's struggling to keep his wife happy. Like everybody else is. Like, <laughs> just... He, he can't keep women happy. Say it ain't so. Every biopic ever made. So um, I wish there would have been less of that and more baseball. But I understand when you go to make a biopic, like all the fans know about the baseball. So they would like to hear more about the man behind the baseball. And that's what this film is. So it does cover some of the, you know, the historic and key moments in his career with the great where he calls out his home run. Uh, you couldn't see what I was doing. I was pointing. And in the movie, he's got the bat. He's like, watch this. And then he hits a home run exactly where he pointed. Um, and then he did it again later in the movie. At one point, he hits three homers in one game. And he's like so old and so fat that somebody else has to run his bases for him. But he can still clobber the occasional homer over the wall. Um, so it just, it, from the time he's seven years old till he's walking out. And then at the very end of the film, like the last thing that happens, he's walking down the tunnel, laboring down the tunnel. He's big old Babe Ruth and he's getting, you know, he's late thirties, early forties. And then Steve Caffrey shows up. He was one of my favorite actors. I'm like, it's, it's, it's the LT from Two and Duty, man. Lieutenant Goldman. All right. Stephen Caffrey. And he plays... The adult version of Johnny, Johnny Sylvester, who the babe hit two home runs for because he was sick in the hospital. And the guy comes up. He's like, my boy's dying. We just signed an autograph for him. And then babe's like, oh, he, he's dying to the hospital. And then he signs the kid's baseball bat and hits two homers during the game. And the kid pulls through. And so now here's the adult of that kid, played by Stephen Caffrey. And um, he has like four sentences, and he's like, "You are the best, you are the best ever." And then the roll the credits, and I'm like, "That's all the Steve, he's, he's, that's all the Steve Caffrey I'm getting." Fuck, man! I came for some Steve Caffrey, and I got 15 seconds at the end of the film. So my one real lament, it's like, let's let's get rid of somebody else and have Steve Caffrey be in the film the whole movie because I'm a fan. But um, it could use some more baseball and a little less of everything else. And, and at one point, the babe wants to be a manager. And it's like, seriously, the Sultan of Swat's going to manage a baseball team. And he, he's not getting it. But um, anyway, could have used more baseball and less of everything else about the man's life. But other than that, it's fantastically made. Uh, it looks great. The act, acting is fantastic. The score happened. It was there. And, uh, yeah, so go check out The Babe from 1992. John Goodman, it's some really good work by him. I'm always always been a big John Goodman fan. Um, you know, he played Dan on the show. Dan Connor on The Connors, but before that it was called what? Oh my gosh. Dementias went into fight, kids. Dementias went into fight. So that's it. What was that show called? 
uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, thank you for watching White White Guy Show. If you're still listening to me, ramble on. I appreciate you. And uh, check out the babe. It was pretty good. And I'll see you guys on the next review. I'm going to try to talk this out for two more seconds until 15-minute mark. Okay, cheers. I'm out of here. Bye.